This is EE300, Fall 2016, Module 1, Video 7, The Initial and Final Value Properties. In this video, we'll develop the initial and final value properties of the Laplace transform. We'll then look at some examples of the properties and when they're applicable. Finally, we'll summarize what we did. Initial and final value properties. Sometimes we want to find the value of a waveform at t equals zero or as t goes to infinity without going to all the trouble of finding the inverse Laplace transform of the waveform. The initial value and final value properties of the Laplace transform allow us to do that in certain circumstances. Both properties follow from the differentiation property of the Laplace transform, which says that the Laplace transform of the derivative of a waveform is s times the Laplace transform of the waveform less the value of the waveform at t equals zero. To derive the initial value property, we consider what happens to the Laplace transform of df by dt as s goes to infinity. We take the limit into the integral and recall that the region of convergence of the Laplace transform of our waveforms and of their derivatives is always a right half plane, so that in the region of convergence, e to the minus st goes to zero as s goes to infinity, and so does the Laplace transform of the derivative. Plugging this into our expression for the Laplace transform of the derivative, s cap f of s goes to f of zero in the limit as s goes to infinity. This comes with some strings attached. Both the waveform and its derivative actually have to have Laplace transforms, but also the Laplace transform has to be a proper rational function. If the Laplace transform is not a proper rational function, then s cap f of s will blow up as s goes to infinity. Put another way, this works as long as f of t has a finite limit as t equals zero. Since we let s go to infinity to find the initial value of our time domain waveform, let's see if letting s go to zero lets us find the waveform's final value. Again, we take the limit into the integral. Now e to the minus st goes to one as s goes to zero. And the integral is just the antiderivative of df dt evaluated at infinity and at zero. When we put that into our expression for the Laplace transform of the derivative, the f of zero terms cancel out and we're left with the final value property. The catch in this case is that the Laplace integral for our derivative only converges at s equals zero if zero is in the region of convergence. So s cap f of s can have no poles on the j omega axis or in the right half of the s plane. Initial and final value property examples. Let's work some examples using the initial and final value properties and explore where the restrictions on their use come into play. In our first example, the waveform f of t has the Laplace transform f cap f of s equals 16 times s plus 1 over s plus 2 times s plus 3. To apply the initial value property, we take the limit of s cap f of s as s goes to infinity. As its variable goes to infinity, the limit of a polynomial with positive powers is the highest power term, so the limit of s cap f of s as s goes to infinity is the limit of 16 s squared over s squared as s goes to infinity. The s squares cancel out to 1, pole 0 cancellation, or if you don't like that, you can apply L'Hopital to get the same result, and the limit is 16, so f of 0 equals 16. To find the final, final value of f of t, we take the limit of s cap f of s as s goes to 0. As its variable goes to 0, the limit of a polynomial with positive powers is the lowest power term. So the limit of s cap f of s as s goes to 0 in this case is 16s over s over 6. The limit as s goes to 0 is 16s over 6, which is 0. Since we're new to this, let's find the inverse Laplace transform and check our results. Cap f of s will have partial fractions with poles at s equals minus 2 and s equals minus 3. From cover up, the weight of 1 over s plus 2 is minus 16. The weight of 1 over s plus 3 is 32. The time domain waveform is minus 16 e to the minus 2t plus 32 e to the minus 3t for t greater than or equal to 0, which is indeed equal to 16 at t equals 0, and which goes to 0 as t goes to infinity. Note that f of t had a finite value at t equals 0, and that there were no poles of s cap f of s on the j omega axis or in the right half plane, so we could use both the initial value property and the final value property. Let's work another example, this time with f cap f of s equal 10 over s times s plus 1. Again, to find f of 0, we consider the limit as s goes to infinity of s cap f of s. In this case, the limit is the same as that of the 
is that of the limit of 10s over s square, or 10 over s, which goes to 0 as s goes to infinity. That means f of 0 equals 0. To find the final value, we take the limit of s cap f of s as s goes to 0. The limit goes to the limit of 10s over s, which is 10. Again, if you're uncomfortable saying s over s goes to 1 as s goes to 0, use L'Hopital. But at some point, you should become, become comfortable that the limit of s to some power over s to the same power is 1, both when s goes to 0 and when s goes to infinity. The final value property says that f of t goes to 10 as t goes to infinity. Again, let's check our results. By partial fractions, the weight of the pole term at s equals 0 is 10, and the weight of the pole term at s equals minus 1 is minus 10. The time domain waveform is 10 times 1 minus e to the minus t for t greater than or equal to 0. f of t has a finite value of 0 at t equals 0, so the initial value property worked even though cap f of s had a pole at s equals 0 on the j omega axis. And, and even though cap f of s had a pole uh, at s equals 0 on the j omega axis, s times cap f of s only has a pole at s equals minus 1 by pole 0 cancellation, so the final value property works. Now let's see some cases where one or another of the initial value property or the final value property doesn't work. Consider cap f of s equals s times s plus 6 over s plus 3 quantity squared. For the initial value case, we take the limit of s cap f of s as s goes to infinity. The limit goes to s cubed over s squared, which equals s, which goes to infinity. Because f cap s of s, because cap f of s was not a proper rational function, f of t has no finite limit at t equals 0. For the final value case, the limit of s cap f of s is the limit of 6 s squared over 9, which goes to 0 as s goes to 0. So the final value of f of t is 0. When we go to inverse transform cap f of s, we see that it is quadratic in both numerator and denominator, so it's not a proper rational function. Adding and subtracting 9 in the numerator, we can write cap f of s as 1 minus 9 over s plus 3 quantity squared. In the time domain, the right-hand term is minus 9 t e to the minus 3 t, but we don't know the inverse transform of 1. It turns out that 1 is the Laplace transform of the delta function, which does not have a finite value at t equals 0, meaning it was correct that the initial value property didn't result in a finite value for f of 0. The delta function is 0 everywhere except at t equals 0, so the final value property worked just fine, as none of the poles of s cap f of s are on the j omega axis or in the right half plane. One last example. In this case, cap f of s is s over s squared minus 225. Cap f of s is a proper rational function, so we expect f of t to have a finite value at t equals 0. The limit of s times cap f of s as s goes to infinity is the limit of s squared over s squared, which is 1. So f of 0 equals 1. The final value property requires s cap f of s to have no poles on the j omega axis or in the right half plane. Our cap f of s has poles at plus and minus 15, so there is a pole in the right half plane, and the final value property is not applicable. Let's see what f of t actually does. The partial fractions of f of s are something over s plus 15 and something over s minus 15. So the residue of the pole at s equals minus 15 is 1 half, and the residue of, at s equals plus 15 is also 1 half. So f of t is 1 half e to the minus 15t plus 1 half e to the plus 15t. At t equals 0, f of t is 1, but as t goes to infinity, f of t blows up because of the e to the plus 15t term, which corresponds to the pole at plus 15. Summary. In summary, we derived the initial value and final value properties of the Laplace transform, which said that we could find f of 0 by taking the limit of s cap f of s as s goes to infinity, and that we could find the limit of f of t as t goes to infinity by taking the limit of s cap f of s as s goes to 0. For this to work, the Laplace transforms of both f of t and its derivative have to exist. We saw that the initial value property yields a finite value for f of 0 only when f of, cap f of s is a proper rational function. And we saw that the final value property only works 
when S cap f of S has no poles on the J omega axis or in the right half plane. This has been EE300 Fall 2016, Module 1, Video 7, The Initial and Final Value Properties.